favorite, Weedle Twin Needle, bringing you all a Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Using an Armor Rouge and our Believer team that got me to Master Ball tier. I know it's not a very impressive feat, but it's the first VGC video on my channel. So if you all are excited for the Scarlet and Violet VGC content on the channel and want to support the content, make sure to leave a like on the video, watch until the end of the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment on the question of the day, which is going to be, what is your favorite strategy or Pokemon you've used so far in Scarlet and Violet or seen other people use? Let me know in the comments. Also, a second part of this question, which is just a repeat of my first narrated Scarlet and Violet video, which Pokemon or strategies would you like to see me utilize in a future Scarlet and Violet video? And if you see a suggestion you also want to see me use, make sure to upvote their comments, reply to their comments saying we'll use this strategy now because I really want to do a lot of community requests. And speaking of community, I do have a Discord as well, free to join, a place where you can hang out, talk and play Pokemon and just have a good time. A link to that will be in the description. Big shout outs to those who left a super things on my recent content. If you enjoy my content very much and want to go the extra mile to support me financially, there is a super things option. It's of course entirely optional, just watching my content really means so much, but you know, the option is there if you want to help a broke bitch like me out. So as you can see by my team, we are packing a Trick Room based team. I know it's not the most entertaining gameplay, I know a lot of people don't like Trick Room, but it's my first team in Scarlet and Violet, give me a break. There's a lot of cool text on this team. So we have Ndidi and Torkoal, Arboliva and Armor Rouge, the two icons of this video, Tauros and Oranguru. So overall a pretty hard Trick Room team, although Tauros does give us an option outside of Trick Room, even though it's not the greatest, it's still there. And as you can see by my first opponent's team, Arboya, Aboya. So my opponent's team is kind of interesting. They have Dragonite, Torkoal, Ferrigiraf, Lilligant, Grimmsnarl, and Annihilate. So it looks like some sort of Balance team. They have like a Trick Room option. They have Lily Cole for like after you eruption shenanigans. And they have dual screens, Dragonite setup with, you know, Terra Normal Extreme Speed, Annihilate bulk up stuff. So that's what I got from my Aboya's team. And yeah, that's my opponent's team. Without further ado, let's get into the first VGC narrated battle on the channel. Alright, so we're up against Aboya, and look at them, they're with their bestie in their picture, that's cute. So, um, I, I need to update my picture, I haven't done that in this video because I didn't know how, but I know how, but when I recorded these battles, I didn't have it changed. So yeah, I'm gonna leave with Ndidi and Oranguru, a pretty um, common lead I do a lot with this team, Ndidi plus Armor Rouge or Ndidi plus Oranguru or Oranguru plus Armor Rouge. Basically, some combinations of the, of the psychic types is what I lead half the time. So I'm gonna switch out of the Ndidi turn one and bring in Armor Rouge just because um, I figure our Frigiraf and Grim Star won't really be doing damage to me as they go for a light screen turn one and Frigiraf is going to decide to go for an imprison here because they want to shut down my trick room which is a good idea but I decided to go for a chilling water turn one into my armor rouge do a really big chunk of damage because my Oranguru is life orb but more importantly we're gonna activate our weakness policy with our armor rouge getting double our special attack and now we're going to take Life Orb damage with Oranguru, and now the Symbiosis is going to pass over the Life Orb to Armor Rouge. And now I'm going to switch out of my Oranguru and bring back my Ndidi, just because I want to protect my Armor Rouge now that I got it all super stacked up with plus two Life Orb. My opponent's going to try to go for a Parting Shot in Psychic Terrain. There's a lot of people in this video that forget how Psychic like, Terrain works, and we actually outspeed for Ridge Ref outside of Trick Room, or maybe we don't, because my opponent decides to go for their Trick Room here. They just set up the Trick Room for me, so I'm like, okay, I'll take that. I mean, I'm not really complaining. So I'm gonna go for a follow me here with my Ndidi, just because I gotta protect my Armor Rouge, of course, and uh, yeah, they're gonna go for Reflect with their Grim Snarl, because they're pretty much stuck in here. They could go for Spirit Break, but I, they might not have it. I go for the Expanding Force. I'm actually slower than you know, the Ridge Ref, whatever. I go for Spinning Force and we're going to knock it out. I could have went for Heat Wave, I understand, but I didn't want to miss versus the Frigiraf. And yeah, so they're going to bring in their Torkoal here. And I figure like, okay, I have Flash Fire on my Armor Rouge, so I should be fine. I did want to use Weak Armor, Armor Rouge, but I, th I think I might say Weak Armor Strats for Cerulege or whatever the name is. So yeah, um, they're going to bring in the Annihilate here. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. They just brought this in and now they're going to Terrastralize their Torkoal because Terrestrialized Torkoal, I have, it ha I have it on my team too, like trust me, I don't really use it much in this video because it's kind of one dimensional and obvious what it does, but it's very good, Terra Fire, Specs, Torkoal, it doesn't even have to be Specs, the Eruption like bodies everything, but thankfully, um, I know I'm going to sacrifice some DD here, um, it's kind of unfortunate, but um, I had to protect myself from a potential Parting Shot, not Parting Shot, Spirit Break, 
And they're gonna go for a Terra Fire Eruption, give me the Flash Fire, and hit my Ndidi and annihilate poor Ndidi, which is sad, but Ndidi kind of deserves it. Ndidi is a bitch in this gen because it gets Trick Room now. Not that this one has it, but yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a plus two Expanding Force, Life Orb, Psychic Terrain boosted, and they're both gonna get annihilated. Um, unfortunately, my opponent kind of mental boom because they had Imprisoned Trick Room and they kind of lost the Trick Room because they set up Trick Room themselves, and so they kind of reached for them. <laughs> So Armorer's making, you know, the opponent rage quit. Iconic, actually. We love that. So make sure to leave a like for the rage quit. Thank you for allowing me to put rage quit in the title without clickbaiting people. And let's get on to the next battle. And oh my god, the fading screens in this game are so laggy. Like, this game needs help. Like, I try to, like, cut around the bad transitioning and frame drops and stuff like that. Try to make the, you know, viewing experience as pleasing as possible but this game makes it kind of difficult i won't lie okay my second opponent today has a very hyper offensive team with garchomp murkrow hydra raygon goldango mousehold and breloom so it looks like they're going for a hyper offensive tailwind but yeah let's just get into the second battle so my opponent's going to be leading off with their garchomp and their murkrow turn on both legit shinies as i'm going to lead off with my oranger and the indeedy so I, like I said, I pretty much lead this almost every game. Um, Trick Room is pretty one-dimensional, and um, you can definitely make a very complicated a Trick Room team with a lot of modes. But I figure since I'm trying to use Arboliva and Armor Roge, I should just use Hard Trick Room because you know that's how it works. So they try to go for a Prankster Taunt, not knowing how Psychic Terrain works. We are in Master. Well, actually, not yet. Most of these battles took place outside of Master Ball, which kind of explains some of the questionable plays. But yeah, they're gonna go for a Sword Stance. I go for a Trick Room turn one set up that trick room and now what i can do is you know because the taunt failed they're going to switch out of the murkrow and they're going to bring in their mouse they're going to bring in their mouse hold which is legit shiny of course even though i could barely tell the difference they just made it shiny anyways they're just an amazing shiny hunter anyways i'm going to go for the terrestrialization with my icon my arboliva i love this pokemon so much and i think like i'm going to use this thing more in my future double battles as well just because this thing has a lot of potential even if it's not the best but yeah we're gonna go for the <laughs> the frame drops please i this game is something else anyway gonna go for the chilling water into my arboliva you know water my plant activate the seed sower which is going to you know set up the grassy terrain and we're going to activate our absorb bulb and get a special attack increase and then the symbiosis is going to activate after we take the life orb damage and now what i can do is go for the terrain pulse with the terra grass boost terrain boost plus one special attack grassy terrain boost goodbye <laughs> goodbye garchomp they got handled and the mouse hold is you know it's just switched in so it's not going to go for a population bomb or anything like that and i'm not really too afraid of the mouse hold just because you know terrain pulse will obliterate it and now they're going to bring out their breloom here so they send out their breloom and i don't want to get put to actually i can't get put to sleep i'm a grass type but i decided to switch out and bring in my Arbol- not my Arboliva, my Ndidi, just because I want to set up the Psychic Terrain so my Terrain Pulse turns into a Psychic Attack versus the Breloom. Though, to be honest with you, the Grass move would just hit the Breloom anyway and probably break it down to Sash. But I just go for Protect anyway just because I want to play it safe as they are going to go for a Protect with their Mouse Hold as well. And now the Breloom is going to decide to go for a Rock Tome, which is kind of interesting considering Trick Room is up, but I guess they didn't have a better move to hit me. Mach Punch can hit me because of Psychic Terrain, so it does make sense. Now they're going to switch out of the Breloom. They actually make a good play here. They're going to switch out of the Breloom and bring in the Murkrow, as I kind of got my ass right on Tuesday because I go. I just go for Follow Me here, just because, you know, I got to go for the redirection spam. Gotta show this mouse who the better redirection user is. I go for Terrain Pulse as they switch into Murkrow to pivot into that good play. But unfortunately for them, they go for the Population Bomb. And my Rocky Helmet and DD is going to destroy this this entire family of mice. And yeah, they get what they deserve. Down goes the mouse to its own attack because of Rocky Helmet. And now they're going to bring in their Breloom again. So in comes the Breloom and they don't have a pivot into the Terrain Pulse this time around. So they try to go for the Prankster Taunt again. I think they were just doing that because they expected to die. I don't know. I just go for Terrain Pulse into the Breloom. It is Focus Ash, of course, because most Breelooms are Focus Ash in doubles. In singles, you can go more of an offensive build because, you know, it's 1v1. But in doubles, you definitely need the Focus Ash to not just get knocked out immediately. Though, I mean, I'm sure you can make Breloom without Focus Ash if you wanted to. Down goes the Breloom 
to the Psychic. And now they're gonna, oh sorry, they go for a foul play into Indeedee and just knock me out. Yeah, I forgot that was, uh, Murkrow was their last Pokemon. So I try to go for the side Psychic into my <laughs> Arboliva. Believe it or not, Arboliva or not, I try to go for side Psychic to Rain Pulse to BM, but unfortunately um, they killed my Indeedee. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna send out Tauros, Tauros for the first time in this video. So I'm gonna send in my Tauros here. And I do have, um, I actually used a different Toro set after a lot of these battles. I was messing around with the defensive Toro set, but I decided a speedy offensive set was better for this team. But yeah, we're going to set our stuff up with the Seed Sower. They go for foul play into my Tauros. On this, um, and this battle is max HP, max defense, body press, but in future battles, I do use max speed, max attack because I did have two different Tauros. But yeah, we're going to knock out the Murkrow with the Terrain Pulse and we're able to defeat our opponent thanks to Arboliva bodying them. Like, Arboliva believe I handled like every single kill besides like the Breloom I guess because um you know they had a sash but yeah hopefully you all enjoyed that battle and let's move on to the next one okay this next battle is actually on the casual ladder because I wanted to uh, test out and show you all this cool interaction between a uh, Tauros and Oranguru so we are actually on the casual ladder for this battle my opponent here Junior is packing a pretty you know cool team because it is the casual ladder you know they're packing Grafii Tinkaton, Cerulege, Quaquavo, Max Caliber, and Electra. So their team is spicy. This is more of a laid back battle. But yeah, let's just get into this battle. Okay, so Junior is packing the Cerulege and their trainer card. So you know they love Cerulege or Cerulege. I need to use that Pokemon soon. They're going to lead off with Cerulege and Tinkaton, their favorite Pokemon. They led off with their Ace turn one. I did off with my Tauros and my Ndidi. Set up this like terrain. I actually didn't go for follow me trick room in this game. <gasps> I know. Instead, I'm gonna go for you'll never guess what I'm gonna go for. Instead of follow me trick room, they're gonna switch out a super ledge. They don't want to sacrifice their ace immediately. They're gonna bring in their godzi because this is the casual ladder. Nicknames are actually on. I didn't make my Pokemon just because I, you know, it's not my it's not on my priority list unless it's singles. I mean doubles. I kind of like I'm used to the nicknames being off, so I just don't even bother. But yeah, I'm gonna go for the bulk up here with my Tauros as, you know, I go for Follow Me Bulk Up instead of Follow Me Trick Room. You know, I'm very creative. They go for a Light Screen with the Tinkaton and look at her go, Tinkaton. Go girl, give us nothing with the Baby Doll Eyes and Psychic Terrain because nobody knows how Psychic Terrain works, though this is the Casual Ladder, so you know, I gotta give it a pass. This might just be their end game team for all we know because you'll see why. Uh, they go for a Dragon Dance here with their uh, Bax Calibre, so at the very least they know setup moves are a thing. They do have Light Screen, Dragon Dance, so you know their team. It's, it, you know, it looks like they know what they're doing. I go for a Psychic here into the back caliber after the light screen it does absolutely nothing and now i'm gonna go for the follow me again a lot of people will be scared and this is kind of pathetic because even after the dragon dance my tauros outspeeds the back caliber i don't even know how that's possible it's giving no evs um so yeah like this is more of a casual battle i just wanted to showcase um this toro set and um yeah i didn't feel like grinding more rank because i you know I got sick of it and I wanted to just show off the interaction. I wasn't going to showcase this battle in the first place. I just want to showcase like the little clip, but I ended up showing off this battle anyway just because there's a lot of funny stuff that happens. So here, I'm just going to bring in their Quaquavo, their starter, but not their ace, it's just their starter Pokemon. Their ace is their Shrew Ledge. They're going to, um, you know, terrestrialize their starter and go into water because, you know, why not? Um, Aqua Step with the Moxie, it could be scary. I just go for another bulk up. We're actually water fighting types fighting each other, but you know, they just got rid of their fighting type with the terrestrial water. They go for play rough into the Ndidi, but because of follow me. Actually, we didn't even click follow me. I just want to click psychic. They go for ice spinner here and uh, get rid of my psychic terrain and um, yeah, take Rocky Helmet damage. Rocky Helmet and Ndidi is putting in a lot of work. They get rid of my psychic terrain and uh, I just go for psychic here. Trying to do some damage, but after they got rid of my Psychic Terrain and the Light Screen, we do absolutely nothing. And now I'm going to switch out my Ndidi, and I'm going to bring in my Ar Arboliva, actually. I thought I was going to bring in Arboliva, but I bring in Arboliva instead. As they go for Baby Doll Eyes, reducing my attack, but I don't really care about my attack right now on Tauros, just because I have a lot of defense. This, you know, Quaquavo can't touch me, neither can the Stinkaton, because Stinkaton sucks. But then my opponent hits me with an air slash and it like destroys me. I'm like, oh my God, why do you have air slash? You don't want to underestimate in-game players. Like I'm telling you, like the moment you sleep on them, they'll, they'll catch you slipping. So we're going to eat our citrus beer here with my Tauros and now I get to showcase the interaction. So I'm going to switch out my Arboliva and I'm going to bring out my Oranguru. So I bring in Oranguru and we should be able to tank whatever with Oranguru, even like a terrestrial water aqua step because they're, they're like a mixed quaquavel. Yeah, I go for Protect here, and they're gonna go for a Play Rough 
you know, target my Tauros because it does have a bunch of boost right now. It has a lot of bulk ups, but I obviously want to protect and stall for my Cut You ability because what the ability does is that after you eat your berry on the next turn, at the end of next turn, you actually get the berry again. So Cut You is going to give me another Citrus Berry. Maybe the 33% berries are better on Cut You. I don't know. I just I was experimenting with Citrus. You got to start small. Um, we're going to Symbiosis though and get the Life Orb because it actually works with the second berry you eat off Cut You. So you can actually position Symbiosis. In a way, I just want to showcase that. I know it's not that big of a deal, but I want to showcase like the symbiosis combos with this game because it's kind of like the whole point. But yeah, I'm going to bring in my Ndidi here. Once again, I set up the Psychic Terrain and I just go for close combat and Big Ball Quabble. That will not get out, and the yeah, this Tauros is just kind of set to sweep. Although Tankaton with the play ref, you know, could potentially knock me out. I do have a bunch of bulk up boost, but Duffy here is going to get knocked out. I definitely am bolding an endgame noob, but the stadium looks nice at least because we're on the casual ladder. I think the stadiums are tied. I think, Frank, there's like a preset like uh, ladder, not ladder, but like stadium, but like on casual, the stadiums are random. I don't really know how it works, but yeah, they, I don't know why the stadium is like all colorful and different and casual, but then our rank is like the same one. But whatever, I'm gonna go for follow me, and they're gonna, you know, get hit by Raging Bull, and unfortunately their ace is gonna get annihilated. I feel bad because like. The team is fun, like I love Tinkaton. I definitely have to use Tinkaton as well in a future video. Um Tinkaton is iconic, I love her. But yeah, I'm Raging Bull. Uh, you know, we actually don't get knocked out by Play Rough. My Raging Bull, my Tauros. I think the water Tauros and Fire Tauros are so cool by the way. Um, I know it's just like Tauros, but like <laughs> adding a type on it. I mean fighting water and fighting fire are super cool types. And you know, pure fighting is kinda cool too, I guess, but it's mostly just like the water fire and water fighting that I like. But anyway, we're able to defeat Junior. Um, I got to showcase the Kachu Symbiosis interaction, so I'm happy. Let's move on to some more competitive battles. Okay, my next opponent today basically has a better version of my team. Like, they're packing Torkoal, Oranguru, like I am, Garchomp, and Sylveon, and Annihilate, so they have a mode outside of Trick Room where I really don't, so... Um, their team is definitely more versatile, but yeah. Let's just get into this battle. So my opponent's gonna be leading off with the Garchomp and Annihilate, as I'm gonna lead off with Ndidi and Armor version. I'm like, oh, I'm sensing a final game at Annihilate, and I am a crybaby about this Pokemon because I don't mind Rage Fist. I think Rage Fist is cool, but 110 base HP, Ghost type, so you can't fake it out. High base speed final game, but I just cut out the Terrestrialization animations there just because it was like a minute of time. Not really, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but final game, but is going to trade one for one because I didn't really prepare for this Pokemon when I built my team and you know yeah I kind of like losing DD. I basically had to pick one to die just because Annihilate does that to you if you don't prepare for it. I definitely should prepare for it in the future games I build and I will definitely but unfortunately um, I had a Terrastalize to counter the Terrastalize Garchomp instead of the Trick Room just because the ground Terrastalize Earthquake would have definitely destroyed me if I stayed fire type but because I'm not a pure psychic I'm actually able to take it sent in, sent in a Ranguru as now they're going to bring in their own Ranguru. I'm like okay uh, this should be okay, but the Garchomp here is going to go for Protect. My opponent's going to play very defensive here. My opponent actually plays pretty well. Like, this opponent's definitely more experienced than the previous opponents I've shown in this video, that's for sure. So I go for the Wide Guard with my uh, Armor Rouge as my opponent. Uh, we're going to go for Chilling Water. I'll speed their Oranguru. And, um, you know, the opponent protects themselves. I can't really activate Weakness Policy here. And they actually reverse the Trick Room, so I'm like, oh crap, that's not good. But, you know, I could go for Wide Guard Trick Room, so I'm just gonna go for it again. Wide Guard, I can live in Earthquake pretty easily. Yeah, my opponent plays around that though, and they go for the Dragon Claw into my Armor Rouge, knocking me out. But it's okay, because I should be able to set up the Trick Room again, and then bring in a Pokemon in the back, like Arboliva, the Queen. So yeah, down goes Armor Rouge. We already swept the Expanding Force in the first battle though, but the Aranguru ends up carrying taunts, and I'm like, crap, like my opponent is kind of like destroying me. I can kind of tell from the Annihilate Garchomp lead that they were like better than the previous opponents, <laughs> that's for sure. So I just go for the Chilling Water here to lower the Garchomp's attack a little bit. Oh, actually I can't because of the Clear Amulet. So Clear Amulet prevents the attack drop. And now I'm gonna bring in my Arboliva here. So I'm like, well, this is pretty bad, but my opponent's going to make an interesting play. They're going to switch out of the Oranguru. I'm assuming they might not be Telepathy. I mean, they have to be Telepathy, right? Because they could just click Terrestrialize Earthquake. They're going to bring in the Aditi here and click Protect. I don't really know what they were trying to accomplish with this. I guess they wanted to bring in Aditi to like protect the Garchomp, but like they were in a really good position. So I don't really get why they did that. But regardless, you know, I try to go for the uh, <laughs> Terrain Pulse, Psychic Attack Terrain Pulse, but it doesn't work. But I'm able to go for the Chilling Water into my Arboliva. Once again, water her, get the Seed Sower activated. And of course, we're going to consume our Absorbolt as well, getting a special attack increase. And then the Symbiosis will activate and uh, after we take Life Orb damage. 
We're gonna, Symbiosis will activate, giving us the Life Orb, and now my opponent's gonna go for the Follow Me to redirect any damage targeted at the Garchomp, but, um, yeah, they go for a Sword Stance here. Very greedy, um, very, very greedy. I don't really know why they did that, because they didn't really need to, but I go for Hyper Voice because it is a spread attack. Stab, we actually crit the Ndidi and annihilate her, but it's what she deserves because our Beliva doesn't play, she only slays. And yeah, foul play here will knock out that Garchomp at that little sliver of HP. And even if it didn't, um, Grassy Terrain actually reduces Earthquake damage, believe it or not. So I don't think Earthquake sweeping was a potential threat. Um, Dragon Claw would have definitely hurt, but I do think I could have survived potentially. But now they're going to bring in Arvanguru, and they know that they're beaten because uh, Arboliva handled them with ease. So yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed that battle. Arboliva once again, carrying like she should. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the last battle. My final opponent today has a pretty balanced looking team. They have Grimmsnarl for screens, Sylveon, Garchomp, and Hydreigon for a nice like balanced good stuffs Pokemon, and then Ndidi and Arm Rouge as well, just because they're pretty good on their own, even outside of a hard Trick Room team. Like expanding force with Life War and you know protection with Ndidi is still pretty strong even outside of Trick Room. And then you can also set it up between Ndidi because it gets Trick Room now and Arm Rouge. But yeah, that's my opponent's team, and let's just get into this final battle. So we're challenged against my opponent who has a name I can't pronounce, and they have um, Desitron, the Icon Ar Iron Valiant, and they're a trainer card, so they're a queen for that. They're going to lead off with their Ndidi and Armor Rouge, as I'm going to lead off with my Tauros, the Peckish, and my Armor Rouge here, because I figured Tauros would be decent in this game, assuming they weren't going to go for a Trick Room route. And they do lead off with Ndidi Armor Rouge, so I figured they will go for a Trick Room. So they're going to go for Follow Me here, and I do actually... Um, go for the bulk up, I believe. Now I just go for Raging Bolt into the Ndidi to do some chip damage, and they're actually packing the Rocky Helmet Ndidi, so my opponent is pretty based for that. And they actually go for Expanding Force, and I'm like, oop, bye Tauros. So yeah, Tauros handled my last opponent, but we got Karma for handling a casual opponent, and now we're going to get deleted from the game. But I also carry Expanding Force on my Army Rouge, and now I'm going to go for the Expanding Force here and do some good chip to the Ndidi and the Army Rouge. I think we actually got a crit. No, he didn't. Wow, that just did a lot. But now I'm going to bring in my Oranguru here, and I do want to go for the Trick Room here. So my opponent's going to Terrastalize, actually, because they want to go for the Terrastalize Psychic. They're actually Terrastalize Psychic just like me. The Psychic-type boost when you get from your Terrastalize and then Psychic Terrain, like, it's kind of crazy. Um, with Life Orb, it's definitely more viable than my strategy, which is, like, self proc Weakness Ball. So you can't chill, like, Water and Terrastalize Psychic in the same turn. Um, you could if you did, like, a uh, Brutal Swing, but I don't think Oranguru gets Brutal Swing. And plus, like, Chilling Water, like, works the Arboliva, too. Like, you know, sometimes you gotta pick certain things for mean strats. You can't cover everything. You can't have everything. But yeah, they go for Expanding Force. They're able to block it with Wide Guard. Um, Wide Guard Arm Rouge is, like, so good. Even, like, outside of a Trick Room team, Arm Rouge is a very good Pokemon. I really like this Pokemon after using it. I just go for Trick Room here. Go for Wide Guard Trick Room. Able to set that up versus the Ndidi. Helping Hand, Expanding Force, Terra Psychic, just completely denied. And now it's my turn to Terrastalize. You're like, oh yeah, Arm Rouge ditto. No. I'm Terrastalizing my Oranguru, and I'm actually Dark Terrastalized Oranguru. Um, and because of, I do have Foul Play, and Foul Play with Terrastalize Dark actually does a lot of damage, believe it or not. So they're gonna protect Ndidi for some reason, and I'm just gonna go for Terrastalize Foul Play Dark type into the Arm Rouge, and that will knock it out. So down that Pokemon goes, thankfully. Don't have to worry about that anymore. And the Terrastalize threat is gone, which is really nice. So yeah, I think I just attack here with my Armor Rouge. Or do I just cut it out? But yeah, no, I just go for Expanding Force. And it gets blocked by Protect. And now my opponent, I think they bring in their Hydreigon. I forgot what they bring in. Who do they bring in? I forgot. Yeah, they bring in Hydreigon. And this Pokemon is a big threat. Uh, my Pokemon, my team is actually really weak to Hydreigon. I'm be real. Like, our Arboliva can't really hit it. Um, Tauros is like my best bet versus it, and I lost it turn one, so that's scary. I just go for the Terrestrialized Dark Foul Play into the Ndidi to knock it out. Take my Rocky Helmet damage, which kind of blows, but it's okay, because I should be able to do some decent chip damage with single target Heat Wave with my Armor Rouge, and I can't hit myself with Foul Play, so I'll definitely knock myself out. So I just go for the Heat Wave, and I do like very little damage to Hydreigon. I think it might be a Salt Dust, but it might just be like, I don't really know what set the Hydreigon is, because they're not Life Orb. Yeah, Dark Pulse will knock out my Armor Rouge. And now I'm going to bring in my Ndidi here, because this is my last Pokemon. I only have Ndidi and Oranguru left, so it's kind of not in the best spot. Um, but I do still have my Terrastalized Dark Oranguru, and I'm going to go for the Helping Hand here, because I'm like, listen, there's no way Garchomp's going to live. Uh, Dark-type Stab, Life Orb, Helping Hand, Foul Play. 
and I did not. Garchomp got obliterated, so my Dark Terra Oranguru is kind of saving my ass after getting handled turn one. Like, we love this Oranguru right now. I love them, and Life Orb, though, I'm taking a lot of chip damage as the uh, they're gonna go for a Heat Wave here, and Oranguru is going to dodge it because Oranguru doesn't give a shit, and Indeedee takes no damage at all. Psychic Terrain is gonna wear off which is fine. I'm not going to go for psychic moves anyway. I'm going to go for the Trust Slice Foul Play here, and they must have zero attack IVs because they take like no damage from that, but it's okay because instead of going for the Follow Me or Healthy Hand, I just go for Heal Pulse because I figure like it's going to be a Rangu versus a Hydreigon. I might as well go for the Heal Pulse, and now Dark Pulse will knock out my Ndidi. So down goes Ndidi. A lot of people were scared of her, it's true. And now it's just a Rangu versus this um, Hydreigon, but unfortunately Trickomare is off, so they're able to move before me, go for the Draco Meteor, and do a decent chunk of damage. Um, they lower their special attack, but I'm going to go for the Trash Slice, Dark Foul Play, with Life Orb, and it might be a 2 KO looking at this range, so it all comes down to if I can live another attack from this Hydreigon, and I should be able to, it might be a roll, they go for the Draco Meteor, and thankfully we get knocked out. And we actually lose Poketuber hosting a loss? Well, listen, it's at the end of the video, and no one watches till the end of the video, so no one's gonna know about the loss, right? Yeah, anyway, I figured I'd post this game because we got to showcase the Dark Trastalization Orangaroo. I thought that was pretty cute, and you know, it was a good game. Like, it was a close game, and you know, sometimes you gotta hold those L's. And me losing my Tauros turn one definitely sent me back really far and i almost brought it back with the dark terrestrialized orangaroo so yeah hopefully you all enjoyed that battle and let me show you all the rental code so here's the rental code um i don't really have much else to say i pretty much showcased every combination i wanted to use in this video besides my dark terrestrialized eruption torkoal that pokemon under trick room if you can like get ndd orangaroo and dd gets knocked out you bring in torkoal and you just like win with terrestrialized eruption unless they have like arm rouge or wide guard <laughs> um it's really scary. I didn't want to showcase it too much in this video. It's kind of like how I got to Master Ball, though, not gonna lie. <laughs> like, a lot of these battles, I got carried by Torkoal, but I wanted to showcase the meme Pokemon, which is like Arboliva, the Kudshu Symbiosis stuff, and, you know, Armor Rouge with the Chilling Water self pack Weakness Policy. So yeah, here's the code if you want to use it. I, I'm kind of like, I used it a little bit in Master Ball, and I kind of took a lot of owls, I'm not gonna lie. So I don't think this team is too great, but it's my first team I built, and I figure it was a lot of fun to use. And if you want to give it a shot, you know, in the early tiers or casual, here's the code. I'll leave a pokey face as well in the description. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. I love you all very, very much. And I'll check you all in my next video.